It was three years ago that we decided to sail around the world. Hugh's mom got him a book for his birthday. It was about a family, they'd got three kids and they bought a boat, gave up their corporate lifestyle and sailed around the world. We both read the book and we went, yeah, this is for us, we're so doing this. So we went and did some research. We went to the Southampton Boat Show, which is not ideal because the boats there are absolutely amazing. And then the dream got put on hold. We were happy. Hugh had just given up his teaching job at a school and he'd gone full-time as a musician. And I was full-time as a musician and I was getting a lot of work. We were content. We'd got a lovely community where we lived, some really nice friends. We were just really settled. So we thought, do you know what? We'll just stay here. We'll get a dog and we'll buy a field. And then 2020 happened. But ever the optimists, we decided to pick ourselves back up and we did what we always do when we feel a bit down. We went sailing. It was at that time where the restrictions had been lifted enough so that you could mix with another household. So we decided to take Hugh's teenage cousins because they'd never been sailing. They always wanted to go. And also, they're really good with the kids. So we went sailing around the Solent and it was really lovely. But then Hugh's cousin twisted her ankle. And you know what? I'm really glad that she did. Because if she hadn't, then we would have anchored that night. But instead we thought, we'd better go into a marina just in case she needs some kind of medical attention. Well, as soon as we tied up, I looked across the other pontoon and I saw this beautiful wine glass stern with these three windows in the back. It looked like some kind of magical pirate ship. I absolutely loved it. And it had a big for sale sign on it. So I was like, Hugh, Hugh, come and look at this. And he agreed that it was worth emailing the broker and setting up a viewing for the next day. As soon as we stepped on board, we were instantly in love with this boat. It just feels so solid and it felt so comfortable. And then inside, it's got such a lot of space and the light in there from those windows was just fantastic. It's the first time I'd been on a monohull and I thought, do you know what? I could live on this. It was a bit dated and dilapidated inside. There was damp, there was mold, things were falling down from the ceiling. But what we could do is a complete internal refit. And we've done that before on both our other barges. But we didn't have any money to buy it with. But then Hugh had an epiphany. He's still got some shares in a company that he started when he invented the plastic trombone. And he's been waiting for an opportunity to buy something awesome. But unfortunately, 2020, the government had said, don't play brass instruments anymore. So his shares weren't worth what we needed. OK, that's that then. We can't buy the boat. We were pretty gutted, but I took the leaflet with me anyway. And we took it home and we pinned it on the wall. And we just kept saying, we need this boat. We really need to get this boat. I'm not sure how we're going to do it yet, but we're going to get this boat. So we forgot about it a little bit because we had a fantastic summer. We took our Dutch barge away for three weeks and we went all the way down the Avon, all the way onto the River Severn and down to Sharp Ness. And what was interesting about that trip was that while we were away, Hugh was still working. He was still teaching online and we were still doing all the education things that we would normally do. The kids were having their maths and science lessons and English lessons online. And we suddenly realised that we could actually travel and still live a similar life to what we had now. So we thought, right, what we could do is we could sell the Dutch barge and that way we can buy the Esperance, have enough money to do her up and enough money hopefully to buy some kind of rentable asset to give us a bit more of an income while we were away. Excellent, we'd got a plan. So I furiously started redecorating and trying to spruce up the tukulele ready for sale and Hugh went off on his annual trip sailing with his brothers. While he was away, something else happened that kind of brought us back to the Esperance. Hugh sailed into Hamble and he moored up and he noticed that there was a load of really fancy boats around and lots of people in suits all kind of looking a bit confused and confuffled. And he found out that the Southampton boat show had been cancelled the night before and rearranged and moved. And on the pontoon next to him, he noticed a guy that looked quite familiar. And then he suddenly realised it was the broker that showed us round the Esperance. It was too much of a coincidence not to go and speak to this guy. So he went and had a chat and he was explaining how we really wanted this boat and maybe we could do some kind of deal where we put a deposit down now and waited for the spring. But the broker was saying that the owner really wants to get rid of the boat now. And he said if we put in an offer at a lower price than the asking price, he thought it might be accepted. So Hugh FaceTimed me and relayed the story. And I was got really excited again because, you know, we really wanted this boat. So I happened to just say, 
in a, I don't know, a bit of cheeky madness, really, I said, why don't you ask your brother if he'll lend us the money? And Hugh's brother was sat next to him, and he said, OK, I will. Whoa, our heads were completely spinning. This was not expected at all. And I will always be eternally, eternally grateful. It was pretty incredible. He's trusting us with his money that he's got saved. He is investing in our dream. And we have now the pressure of a year to pay him back. But that's kind of good in a way. Hugh thinks that this is quite good because we have now a set amount of money, a budget. We have a set amount of time. So it kind of gives us these parameters to work towards. We were pretty excited, but before we got carried away, we decided that we'd go down and have a second viewing.